Greetings, my little lovelies. I hope I find you all well again, and as usual, feeling jiggly poo. Now, four marvelous, wonderful new videos for you today. The first one asks the question, are we in the end days? Are we nearing the end of the world? <sighs> Scary stuff. Now, the second one involves going for a swim. Do you fancy going for a swim, my little lovelies? Well, do you? Well, you might just change your mind after watching this one. Now, the third one is all about a church in Lebanon and a bomb. Quite an interesting one. And the fourth and final one is someone asking for your help. They have a supernatural problem and they're asking your advice. Have you ever experienced anything like it? Are you able to help them? Well, let's find out. Oh, oh I think my tummy's room. Did I have breakfast? I've had breakfast. Why is my tummy rumbling? Right, right. Where was, where was I? Oh, yeah. Let's crack on, shall we? Hurricanes, wildfires, and political unrest are all signs the end of the world is approaching, a Christian evangelist has controversially announced. Hurricane Laura is the most powerful storm to hit the USA for a long time, pushing winds of up to 150 miles per hour. The hurricane has destroyed parts of Louisiana and Texas with flash floods, storm surges and hurricane force winds. But a popular Christian evangelist from Indiana believes all this is just a taste of worse to come. Paul Bigley has said that all these hurricanes and seasonal floods in Pakistan, which have killed at least 160 people, are proof of his bizarre claims. He also linked devastating wildfires in California to prophecies in the Bible's Book of Joel. The historic wildfires have so far burned about 1.3 million acres of land, and many people have died. The Book of Joel is one of 12 books in the Hebrew Bible and the Christian Old Testament. In one passage about the end times, Joel describes the sun turning dark and the moon turning blood red. A similar passage can be found in the Bible's Book of Revelation. In both cases they describe the last days of mankind. So my question to you, my little lovelies, is what do you think of this? Do you think we're in the last days? Have we gone too far? Can we pull back? Can we save the world? Can we save ourselves? Or are we do? Are we do? Let us know, my little lovelies. After standing in waist-deep water in Melbourne's Brighton Beach for 30 minutes, teenager Sam Canise emerged with his legs bleeding profusely. But what has caused these wounds? A closer examination showed Sam was bleeding from tiny pinprick holes that were only on his ankles and feet. The culprit lives in and around the beach sand. The crucial part here is that even when Sam was taken to hospital, the bleeding refused to stop. His normal clotting procedures, that stop us all from bleeding to death after, say, a simple paper cut, were seemingly absent. So what's to blame? Well, assuming that Sam isn't high on doses of aspirin, which is known to stop blood clots forming, the likely culprits are small parasites of fish and other marine creatures that release sea fleas that release anticoagulants when they feed on flesh. Sea fleas have been known to attack swimmers in large numbers and are the most likely culprit of this. It is likely the cold waters of the bay only help to numb their bites, meaning Sam never knew he was becoming a meal for some mini monsters. What do you think of that, folks? Going swimming today? Mr. Saeed Deb of Life Centre Church in Beirut said the day of a massive explosion a strange feeling came over him, a combination of anxiety, anger and sadness that shook him to his core. He said he prayed with his staff but he just couldn't shake off the feeling that something bad was about to happen. He said I don't know why, I was rude to everyone, I told them to all go home, just close the centre, but people said how come? We came a long way. We have commitments. We have meetings. He said, just get out, go home, and don't come back until Sunday. This was on a Tuesday afternoon. He said it was as if the Holy Spirit was saying through him, go, 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 go. 
So I was saying everybody, go home, turn off the computers, forcing them all to leave. I was forcing them. And they said, we are cooking, cooking food for refugees and for the poor. And he said, I don't care, cancel everything, get out. They'd all thought that I'd lost my mind, but they didn't know, and certainly I didn't know, it was the Holy Spirit prompting through me. Life Center Church Beirut sits only about a mile from where the explosion happened. He says the blast blew out the windows and the doors to the 4,000 square meter facility and would have surely taken lives if anyone had have been there. More than 200 people did lose their lives in that explosion. Thousands were injured and tens of thousands are now without homes. What do we make of that, folks? As usual, let us know. My name is Jessa. I am from the Philippines, a city called San Jose del Monte City. I am a teacher at a small school where children come from mainly poor backgrounds. I attend a small Catholic church most weekends. I have for the past few months at night been woken up with a feeling of a presence in the bedroom. I have asked my husband if he has felt it, but he has not. I have felt it getting closer and closer as the weeks have gone by. I have contacted my priest. He is unwell at the moment and unable to come to my house. So I was wondering, have any of your viewers ever experienced anything like this? And if so, what did they do to get rid of it? Many thanks, Jessa. Well, there we are, folks. Jessa from the Philippines is asking for your advice. Can anybody help out? Let us know. Welcome back, my little lovelies. I hope you enjoyed them. As usual, let us know your thoughts. Keep everything nice and clean and... tickety boo Now, welcome to all the new subscribers. Get in touch with us. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'd love to hear from you. Right, that's enough nonsense for me for one episode, I think. I think I need to go and eat something. Right. Take care, my little lovelies. I'll see you next time. Ta-ta, my little lovelies. Ta-ta.